situated up here? <laughs> okay. We can begin. That's all right. I wasn't ready when the bell rang. <laughs> it's all good. We're imperfectly. We are completely yet imperfectly here. <laughs> Perfectly. 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 Yeah. Yes. That's better. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Let us rise if you're able. Let us remember the waters of baptism. John, did you want to go over the song? Oh, yes. Let's go over the song first. Thank you. This morning we will be. It says 642 as the entrance hymn, but we're going to do 6, 653 instead of 642. So it's written in a plain chant format, so you notice there are no just notes with no stems. So it looks like a whole note.
narrow perception and our meager minds, which are full of anxiety, fear, and cares, rooted in a small sense of self. Open us up to the true light that shines forth and is available to all. Through Christ, our Savior, and our Healer,
A reading from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and, the, and wayward, since he is, himself is subject to weakness, and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of, of the people. And one who does not presume to take honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of uh, Mel Melchizedek. Uh, in, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned of obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. For all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
They just don't see. They just don't see. The disciples. <coughs> and it's not hard to imagine that they don't see. They have been treated to a heavenly vision, to a beatific vision, to a blessedness and a presence. Just before this, on a hill that they climbed together, James and John and Peter and Jesus, and Jesus is transformed before them and they see him in his glory. But they don't understand it. down from that mountain and Jesus tells them the first time, the first of three times that he is going to Jerusalem to suffer and to die. And then they argue about which among them are the greatest. And when Jesus learns that they've been haggling among themselves about which of them is the greatest, He says to them, for the first time, the greatest among you must be as a servant. And then he takes a child, and he holds this child, and he says, you need to welcome these little ones, and to such as these belongs the kingdom. But they can't stop it. These disciples, they can't stop it. And two of them, two who had been on the mountain with Jesus, Jesus' own, very own cousins, come to him apart from the others. And they say, Grant us to sit at your right hand and at your left in your glory. They just don't see. They can't see what Jesus sees. said, this is my body, given for you, from deep, from deep in his liturgical memory, as a lifelong Lutheran, he called on those words to describe what it was he was seeing.
final words of Jesus. This is my body given for you. He had a vision of the kingdom. He had a vision of the blessed reality that's beyond our eyesight and our ability to hear or even comprehend most of the time. But in that I was able and we were able to share in that beatific vision that he experienced in that moment. It was very difficult for a few days to watch television commercials. About people's lives being improved through better laundry detergent. Suddenly those ordinary things that crowd into our perception seemed meaningless by comparison. Because they are. Because they are. And yet, at the same time, all the ordinariness of life came alive in a powerful way. Everything did not become gray, but everything became living, vibrant color. Because everything, it was clear, is infused with the divine. That all being is divine. That the living presence is present. Capital P. And we're separated from it by a very thin veil. <coughs> and our ordinarily quite narrow ability to see. And so you have Jesus on the road with his disciples. And theirs is not a moral failure. It will do no good to scold them for having the small vision that they had, though they thought it was quite a large one. Let us sit one at your right and one at your left when you come into the glory of your kingdom seems pretty grand, pretty large-minded, but compared to what Jesus was seeing, it was oh so small and egocentric. Because what one can realize when one encounters the light, as the mystics have always called it, is that there's no difference at the end of the day between you and me and others and God. That God becomes all in all in all in all for everyone and everything and everywhere. And that this limited ego consciousness that we have now and we cling so tightly to, and that is the source of our fears and our angers and our anxieties. At the end of the day, dissolves into the light of love without end. And that living presence is possible because that spirit lives in each one of us. That light exists in each and every one of us. And that's what we celebrate. And that's what we remind ourselves of and one another of here. The light 
light is real, it's the really real. The ordinary stuff is not the really real. It's the light to which we're all journeying and in which we all have life.
prayers of the church are all of our prayers together. Let us pray for the church, the world, and everyone in any kind of need. Let us let our hearts and our minds go to those who are suffering, who are in war, who are fleeing danger, who are yearning for justice, who are longing for healing, who are rebuilding from flood and wind. Let our hearts and our minds go to them in solidarity in their suffering. So oh God, for those who feed and clothe, who give and who serve, give them what they need to be the hands and feet of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
say hi to Bernice? What? Did you say hi to Bernice? Hi,
gave us life, who miraculously formed us and shaped us and breathed the divine spirit into us, who sustains us in every moment, who surrounds us with loving care, who inspires us from within and protects us from without. We give thanks and praise and blessing to the source of all life and love and freedom and mercy and compassion.
tengo riquezas, sé que allá en la gloria tengo una mansión, cual alma perdida que entre las pobrezas de mi Jesús. Tuvo compasión Más allá del sol Más allá del sol Yo tengo un lugar Hogar, bello hogar Más allá del sol Más allá Así por el mundo yo voy caminando de pruebas rodeado y de tentación, pero Jesucristo que me está mirando. Me llevará salvo hasta su mansión, más allá del sol, más allá del sol. Yo tengo un lugar, hogar, bello hogar, más allá del sol.
Cranksgiving, Cranksgiving on yeah, November 10th. November 10th, it's a bicycling, can you imagine? Biking uh, a couple of weeks from now. But um, people will do it. They will gather here at noon on that Saturday and they will get a route given to them and a list of food items to pick up at various places. And they will ride to those places and pick up food and bring it back here for our food giveaway ministry. So that's an event. You want a bike? Alex, on a bike? Uh, yeah. um, so, bikers are welcome. Um, I'm going to be here. I could use one or two other volunteers just to help out. But pretty self-sufficient uh, and should be, should be some fun, uh, as well as good work. And then that also, also that weekend, the House of Mercy has uh, included us in their uh, in big event. The House of Mercy has moved, by the way, from Hamlin Methodist to Bethlehem. So House of Mercy is in Bethlehem now, and they are having a big sort of kind of welcome to our new space that they share with Bethlehem as, uh, with a conference uh, with uh, the Catholic theologian uh, James Allison, whose workshop through the weekend is titled, Loving the Neighbor You Hate. Sounds good for anybody, any of us. But uh, the information is back on the bulletin board there. Please rise for our closing hymn and benediction. Janet, one more thing. Clean up day. Clean up day, oh yes, which is next weekend. Thank you. This Saturday, 9 to noon, fall clean up day. Come to all of it, come to part of it, um, and uh, we'll spruce the place up. Okay. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace.